Hi, welcome to another video of Stream Developers. In this tutorial, you'll discover how to build a fully functional SwiftUI audio and video calling app quickly and easily using the iOS SDK of Stream Video. My name is Amos, developer advocate at Stream. I am so excited to get you started. So let's begin. Stream Video provides a platform for building VoIP apps for Android, Flutter, iOS, and React. Using the iOS SDK of Stream Video, developers can build in-app audio rooms, audio calling, and video calling. They can also build live streams just in days. I have divided this tutorial into different sections. We will begin by creating a new SwiftUI app. Then I'll show you how to set permissions for microphone and camera. We will then install the SDK and get to know the overview of the SDK. We will set up the SDK, create and join a call. Then we will dive into the video renderer. I'll show you how to use the call container to render a fully featured calling UI. After creating the call, we will test it on multiple iOS devices. I'll show you how to test it with an iPhone and the companion web app of Stream Video. And finally, we will recap. The resulting application you will build in this tutorial looks like this. We have the remote participants video in a full screen mode, while the local participants video is shown as picture in picture. There are call controls to perform standard call operations such as muting, camera flipping, switching between audio and video. The UI also has a sound indicator and network quality indicator. To get started with stream video, Go to our website under products go to audio and video you can scroll through this page to explore the sample apps as well as the various sdks and sign up for a free trial before we jump to xcode you can find this tutorial in the documentation of our website go to developer audio and video then you select ios from the sidebar on the left go to video call tutorial we will also refer to this tutorial at some point in time. I will move on to Xcode and create a new project. Leave the template as iOS and app for the application. I will call the project video call, but you can name it whatever you want. Then we leave the other options as they are. We have interface to be Swift UI and language as Swift and click next. Then you save it to a location. Since we are building audio and video calling app, the app will need access to the user's microphone and camera. So we need to set permissions for microphone and camera. To do that, we select the main app folder. Then we head to the info tab. The permissions are key value pairs. So you can see on the left, we have the keys. So once you add the key, we also need to add the value on the right side. By putting the mouse cursor on any one of these keys, you can see there is a plus icon. You can click the plus icon to add a new key. Let's scroll to the privacy section. You notice we have privacy camera usage description. Then we have to set a custom string. We can also use the default string Apple provides. So once the user launches the app for the first time, it will be the string that prompts the user about the camera usage. We can hover again on the one we just added and click the plus icon to add another privacy for microphone. We will also leave the value as empty. To install the SDK, we can go to the article I showed previously from our documentation. Under step two, we will copy this link that goes to the main repository of Stream Video iOS. To fetch the SDK, we can go to file, add package dependencies, on the search bar, we will paste the link we just copied that loads the GitHub repo. We can now click Add Package. Before we continue, let's look at the main components of the iOS Video SDK. The Stream Video SDK for iOS consists of three separate SDKs. The UIKit SDK is a wrapper for SwiftUI components. Then we have the low-level client, which is implemented using WebRTC protocol. This provides the calling functionality. Then we have the SwiftUI SDK, which consists of SwiftUI components. Since we are working with a SwiftUI app, we do not need the UI kit. So let's uncheck this option and click Add Package. 
In the navigator, you can see we have package dependencies now. Nook is responsible for lazy image loading. It provides an efficient way to download and display images in your app. Then we have the core video SDK for iOS. The next is protocol buffer. It is a data serialization format designed to serialize structured data for efficient and reliable communication. And the last one is WebRTC, which helps to establish the core. Now that we have the SDK in place, let's look at how to set it up. Create and join a call. From this tutorial I showed earlier, let's move on to step three and copy this sample code and go back to the Xcode project. Let's select the main app file that is video call app.swift and replace the content with the one we just copied. Before we can access the SDK, we need a user to work with. The user can be a guest user, anonymous, or an authenticated user. So over here, you can see we have defined all these user properties with placeholders. You can find the API key from your stream account. There is user ID. For a production app, you need to generate the token from your server side. To simplify things in this tutorial, we have provided you with all these user credentials in the tutorial. So let's refer to the tutorial again and fill all these placeholders. So these are the four credentials we need to fill. I'll select the API key and go back to the Xcode project again and place it here and replace the address as well. So let's look at a summary of the code. Over here, we create a user object with the user ID and hard-coded name and image URL. Next, we initialize the stream video object with API key, the user and token. After this, we initialize the call object to create and join the call with the call type and call ID. The SDK comes with call types such as default, production, live stream, and audio room. But you can also define your own call types. Next, in the app scene, if the call is created, we display the call ID and the number of participants in the call. Otherwise, we show the text loading. Then when the app launches, we use call.join to establish the connection for video and audio. And this is all the implementation for setting up the SDK, creating and joining a call. Let's run it to see what we have done. I will go to the toolbar and change my device to Amos iPhone. Since we set the camera usage privacy, you can now see we have a prompt that says video call would like to access the camera. I'll click OK. We also have another one for microphone. So at the center of the screen, you can see it displays the call ID that it has one participant. So this is how we can establish the connection. Let's move on to the next to see how we can render local and remote participants video. To render the local and remote participant video, we have to use the component in the SDK called Video Renderer. This is a low level component. It renders the participants videos without any call controls or any call UIs. To implement this in the app, we will create two files, participant view and floating participant view. Let's go to the project navigator, control click anywhere and add a new file. I will call it participants view and create. Let's add another one again and call that floating participant view. Let's get the code for both files from the tutorial. The first one is the participants view. So let's copy it from here. I'm going to replace the struct with the code. I pasted this in the wrong file, so I will undo the change. Then select participants view. By clicking on the arrow, we have to import stream video. Then stream video Swift UI. Let's do the same for the floating participant. That is the local participants video. We will also import stream video and stream video Swift UI. Next, let's go to the main app file where we initialize stream video. Previously, in the body of the app scene, we displayed the call ID as well as the number of participants in the call. So we have to update the information to display the video of the local and the remote participants. So let's go back to the tutorial and then copy this code for the update. We can select the body 
and then delete it or replace it with the one we have in the clipboard. So instead of displaying the caller ID and the number of participants, you can see we are displaying the remote participant as well as the local participant here. Now that we have updated the information, we can now go ahead and run the app again. So this shows a video of the local participant. To join multiple participants in the call, let's go back to the tutorial and join from the web using the companion web app. I can now go ahead and click join. So this is how we can use the video renderer to render local and remote participants video. Let's move on to the next, the call container. The call container is a high level component in the SDK. We can use it to render fully featured video UI and call components. So using the call container, we can render incoming call screens, outgoing call screens and active call screens. Let's see how we can implement that. We have already added implementation for the remote participant view and the local participant view. So to render the fully featured video call UI, we need to update our video call.swift file to use the call container component instead. We can get the code also from the tutorial on the website. You can find this at step six. So let's copy this code and go back to the Xcode project. We need the user information we defined over here. So I'm not going to delete the code. Instead, let's fold it and then put comment. Then I'll paste the one I have already copied. I will unfold the code and then copy this section. Let's replace everything here. Let's look at the summary of this code. First, we create an instance of the SDK's call view model. Then we initialize it over here. All the other sections of the code are the same. The last thing to do is to update the app scene. So we update the body of the app scene to use the SDK's call container. With the parameters view factory and the call view model instance we defined earlier. The view factory provides theming and customization support for the SDK. So you can use it to implement completely custom UIs for your audio video calling, live streaming and audio room apps. In this tutorial, we are not doing any customization, so it is using just the default view factory. This is all we need for the call container to be able to render fully featured video UIs and call components. We can now go ahead and run the app again. You have noticed this renders the local participants video. So let's join from the web again. We can run the app also on multiple iOS devices. To do that, we first run it on one iOS device as I have my iPhone selected. Then you should attach another iPhone to the Xcode project again and run it on that as well. That will appear under iOS device. So this is all I have for you in this video. Let's look at the main takeaways from this tutorial. We started by installing and setting up the iOS video SDK. I showed you the main components of the SDK and capabilities. We use the video renderer to render local and remote participant video without any calling UIs. Then we dived into the call container to render a full calling experience. I showed you how to test the video calling app on an iPhone and the companion web app of stream video. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and I believe you now know how to get started with the stream video SDK for iOS in adding audio and video calling, audio room, live streaming to your iOS apps. Feel free to reach out if you have any suggestions, recommendations or questions. Thanks for watching this video.